Hello everyone, it's Jasmine and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're going to do this really fun um, mermaid shaker card using a Distress Ink Oxide Reinker background and some Stamping Bella stamps. Um, these are from their newest release. I've got Tiny Tiny Mermaid set and Under the Sea Creatures. And I do have the matching dies with this, so um, I'm going to go through and show you how I colored them and then I will have die cut them out. So I'm going to um, do some really simple coloring because they're small images. I'm only going to use two colors on the turtle and two colors on the fishes that you'll see in the end card. I didn't show all the coloring um, because I kind of figured that the mermaid was kind of the focal point for the coloring, the Copic coloring. So I wanted to spend most of the time on that. And this is a fairly long video. I think it's 16 minutes or so. Um, so keeping that in mind, keeping your time in mind, I cut out some of the stuff that wasn't quite so important. So for the chest, I'm going in to gonna give it some metallic look with some um, C0, C2, and C4. These are the cool gray markers. And then using some brown tones for the wood. And I use some gold and yellow tones for the little gold coins. And these images are small, you're not going to see a whole lot of detail. Um, and if you think about it, these being underwater, um, not a lot of detail is going to show up anyway. So I didn't go through and add a whole bunch. I just kept it really simple with the coloring. So I've got E23 as my base brown. And then E27 will be my darkest. And then I'll use E25 for my mid-tone. So when you're thinking about shading, you just kind of want to think about where it would be dark and where it would be light. And for this image, I thought it made sense that the light would be coming in from the top right. So those edges aren't going to have as much light on them. They're going to cast a bit of a shadow towards the, the left edge. And then obviously underneath is going to be the darkest where the lid is propped up. And you could even add, if you really wanted to go detail on the chest, you could add a little bit of brown or red orangey tones to significant, to be um, kind of like rusty spots since this is underwater. But again, this is a small image, so I really didn't go into too much detail on it. So I'm starting out with uh, Y35 on the coins, and then for a darker tone, I'll use Y17. And if you haven't used Copics a lot before, you aren't familiar with them. With the numbering system, it's a little bit counterintuitive because you'd think 35 would be um, a darker or more intense yellow when in fact it's a less saturated yellow. So it's a little bit lighter in tone. And the 17 with the one in front is going to be um, more saturated. So the zero numbers are the most saturated colors in the Copic system. And then as you go up, one, two, three, four, it becomes desaturated and less intense or less bright. So moving on to our mermaid, I'm going to give her um, a blue tail. And when you're coloring these images, um, it can be easy to get lost in some sort of preconceived notion of what a mermaid is supposed to look like, especially if, um, you know, I grew up Little Mermaid, so you have this preconceived notion of what a mermaid is supposed to look like with red hair, green tail, purple bra, but that's not really um, reality. You can go in with any color combination you want. It's completely up to you. So I wanted to go in with blues and um, see kind of what tones I could get, what kind of movement I could get with my markers. So I think I use three or four different blue markers on her tail. 
Yes, I've got B16, B24, B28, and B69. And 69 is going to be the deepest blue tone that I use. And I went with some vertical strokes to kind of give her a little bit of movement as if the water was kind of moving around her versus trying to get um, a scale texture. I did want to keep this a little bit more simple, so I decided to go against any um, specific mermaid-esque texture on her tail. And then for the flower, I am going in with some V markers. Let's see. Ah, BV01, BV13, or BV11, rather, um, and V09. So a lot of your BV markers are a little less saturated. They're not, they're not so bright. If you want more of a bright tone purple, you're going to have to go to the RVs or the straight Vs. And I lied, I used V04 instead of V09. <laughs> But I will have all of these markers listed in um, on my blog so that you can check them out if you're interested in specifically what colors I used. So in the conch shell, I used RV42 and RV51. And those are going to be more of a very light toned pink. And so for her skin, I just went with a basic peachy toned with some tan. Nothing too complicated. And I used E51, E31, E33, and then R24, a little bit of blush in her cheeks. And E33 is going to be the darkest skin tone that I use. And that's where I put the shadows and kind of anywhere that would be um, casting a shadow or have a little bit of sun tan on it. So when you're thinking about skin tones and different things you want to do, maybe stretch your coloring skills a little bit, don't be afraid to try different skin tones and try different um, ethnicities on the mermaids. After all, they can be any, any stretch of the human rainbow that you can imagine. And we tend to get stuck into what we look like and um, that can be a lot of fun just to try to play around with different things we're not used to. So next I'm going to go on to her hair and I'm using E08, R59, and E35. So when I wanted to go for like a natural ginger tone or natural red tone. And this was a different combination that I've usually used for red hair, but I really liked how it turned out. And this is a small area, so don't stress too much about getting um, the proper light to fall just right and all that stuff. In the end, you, it blends out to where it looks pretty, but um, when you first add this dark red-brown tone, you're almost, almost like a purpley red, it's kind of like, what, what did I just do? Um, but it blends out really pretty, and I really liked the end result. And this is a smaller image, like I said, so um, you don't have a lot of room to fuss about with just the right lighting and just the right blending and just the right this or just the right that. Um, so don't put too much stress on yourself when you're coloring these images. It'll be okay, I promise. It's more important that you try and you get used to using these markers and seeing what they can do versus it looking exactly like um, someone else's video or a picture you've seen or um, you know, some ideal that you have to practice to reach.
And when you're using these markers and you start to get a little bit of bleeding outside your lines, just let it dry and then come back to it later. Um, you don't have to do all your blending when the markers are wet. You can let it dry and come back to it. And um, that might be a better strategy just so you avoid getting any um, really messy blending outside the lines. So on her top, I use the same colors as the coins, uh, Y35 and Y17. And it's also the same colors in the middle of the flower. So next is time for a little sea turtle. And I'm keeping his color really simple. I'm only using two colors on his skin and two colors on his shell. Let me find the turtle. Oh, here it is. So we're using YG17 for the brighter green and then YG67 for the shadow. And then for his shell, I go in with a brown tone first, E23. And then do some shading around the edges with the YG99. And then top that with the G94. And you can see how that brown tone really toned down the brightness of the green in the shell. So here is a Distress Ink background using the Distress Oxide reinkers that I showed in a previous video and I will link to that in my blog and in the description box on YouTube so you can see how I did that. Um, that one was really fun and I thought it worked, worked perfectly for a deep ocean mermaid kind of background. So I'm just placing my different elements trying to see what's going to look cute and what's going to make sense. I did add some Wink of Stella Clear Sparkle Pen to her tail, just to give a little bit of shimmer. Because mermaids should be shimmery. And I have popped the mermaid up on some foam tape and then I adhered um, the bubbles and the chest, the turtle, with um, score tape. Because I wanted this is going to be a shaker card, so you can't have too much dimension in it, otherwise you have to build up your shaker to be really thick. Um, so I did a single layer of foam tape behind the mermaid to give her just a bit of dimension. And then I'll have a double layer of foam tape for the shaker element so that there's room for the sequence to move around. So I've got some Caribbean Dream um, sequins by Little Things. And then for my shaker element, I used two frame dies to cut that out. Those are um, stitched rectangle dies by Lawn Fawn. It's a black cardstock. And then a Hero Arts acetate window and 3M foam tape doubled up. And then on the front of the shaker, to give it even more dimension, I'm going to adhere um, some bubbles and some little fishies and then my sentiment. Now what I did with the sentiment is I stamped it using Versamark, heat embossed it with some Ranger black sparkle embossing powder on vellum that I had to stick it on the back. So it creates a sticker out of it and it doesn't show. The adhesive doesn't show behind the vellum. So that's why I always use stick it now whenever I'm using vellum because you can't see the adhesive. It makes it perfect. And I cut that out with an oval die. And I'm going to adhere my little fishies with some score tape. The bubbles I colored using B000, B01, and BG01. And then, let's see, my pink fish was RV21 and 25. And my purple fish was V04, 05, and 09. And I think that blue fish was B05. And BG10. So 
This is a super fun summer card. Um, really love this new release from Stamping Bell. I think the, the stamps are just beautiful. Their, their stamps are fantastic quality. Um, so if you get a chance, try them out because they're really nice. So don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button and share if you like my videos. It really helps my channel out and I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for joining me today, guys. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and we will catch you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.